Marquette and Western Kentucky will meet in a two versus 15 matchup in the South region. That is Carter Elliott of Sleepers Media. I am Brian Ralph, Fitek CBB, here on the Sleepers Media YouTube channel, providing previews and recaps for every game across the NCAA tournament. We are your spot for game by game breakdowns. This game, Carter, there is intrigue from the Marquette side of things. Tyler Kolick is expected to play. All signs are that he was held out of the Big East tournament. Probably could have played in the Big East tournament, but they wanted to make sure he was healthy for this game. Marquette still has the bitter taste of last season's second round exit at the hands of Michigan State in their mouth. They want to erase that. So we'll start on the Marquette side of things. Last time out, they put up a good fight against UConn, but ultimately came up short. What has to happen for Marquette to win this game? Yeah, so Marquette is one of the teams that I'm putting on what I like to call exercise Exercise your demons watch this NCAA tournament. Uh, there's a lot of narratives about Shaka Smart in March. There's a lot of narratives about the likes of like Matt Painter in March, Rick Barnes in March. And I'm not saying none of that is earned, okay? All I'm saying is that sometimes all it takes is one run and one breakthrough for that team to kind of get over the hump. And, you know, it, it, I think it was somewhat of a blessing in disguise for this Marquette team to have this experience without Tyler Coley, because in that time, I think Cam Jones has elevated his game. I think David Joplin has elevated his game. I think the, the emergence of Ben gold and his contributions have really, you know, increased, uh, increased throughout this time where Coley's been out. And then, uh, the 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 forgotten big Oso Igadaro, what he can do and the versatility that he brings is just special. And the fact that this team played together and then you add in Tyler Kolick, who is one of the better point guards in the country, I think that this Marquette team has the pieces to make a run and have a really good tournament. And, you know, as a Michigan State fan, Ralph, I love, love referencing the fact that we sent them home last year. But I always leave out the fact that Tyler Kolick did get injured in that first round game against Vermont. And I saw what Tyler Kolick did at the end of last year in, uh, in that last stretch of the Big East tournament and the Big East play. That was one of the baddest men on the planet at that time. And that wasn't what he was in the game against Michigan State. And I feel... I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that. I think that hindered him. So does it depend on Tyler Kolick's health? Of course it does. He's one of the great players in the country, but I think this time off holding him out of the Big East tournament gives him a chance to recover, get better, and prime themselves for uh, for a run in this tournament. I think they can make one. I think they're that good of a team. That's what this game is about for Marquette, and that is the overarching storyline because of everything you just mentioned about what the Golden Eagles are facing the narratives against them, the fact that they purposefully sat out their best player in the Big East tournament who admitted he could have played to make sure that they were good for this. This whole season has been about this run in March and being ready for the NCAA tournament. Western Kentucky, though, presents an interesting um, matchup for them, not from a strength versus weaknesses. They're just a, they're just a unique team. They're just a unique team. They lead the country in tempo. They play faster than anybody else in the country. They also don't shoot a lot of threes and don't really pass the ball. They rank outside the top 300 nationally in three-point rate and assist rate. Essentially, they want to run up and down the court and attack the rim and then try and turn you over. They're not particularly successful uh, shooting the ball, uh, but they they want to get after you, turn you over, make you uncomfortable, and just play in utter, utter chaos. It's a um, it's a very unique style of play. It's one that's worked for Steve Lutz. He's his first year as head coach there at Western Kentucky. He spent the last two years at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, where he led the Islanders to the NCAA tournament both years. He's now three for three in his head coaching career, making the NCAA tournament. That is not bad. That is not bad at all. Now, he has not advanced past the round 64. He did win a first four game with, with A&M Corpus Christi, if I remember correctly. Um, but this is, a, this is an interesting test and an interesting style I think Marquette would have preferred to kind of sink in and play their game to get their feet underneath them in this tournament. I don't know if Western Kentucky is going to allow them to do that. No, they're not. And, you know, uh, I, I'm using my good friend, uh, Evan Miyakawa here. Uh, shout out to my guy, Evan. Um, Evan. Western Kentucky is a top 100 defense. Like they, they, you know, they're a team, like you said, uh, they can make you uncomfortable. Uh, in the games that I watched them this year, 
it, it's funny because I wouldn't necessarily say they're like a, a great defensive team or honestly even a good defensive team. But what makes them good, I would say, is like you said, they make you uncomfortable. And if you, you know, if they smell blood in the water, if they, if you're a little bit loose with that rock, they're going to get out. They're going to run. They're going to try to get the tempo, pick the pace. They want They want chaos. Chaos is mm-hmm. good. They're going to live in chaos. Is Marquette a team that can go, that can kind of, you know, calm down during chaos? I'm trying to think the last time that Marquette did that. I mean, we saw what happened in that game when UConn was able to come into Marquette's house and blow them out. And they kind of had a little bit of that chaos factor in there. Mm-hmm. And Kolick was struggling and things weren't going well. And it just kind of spiraled out of control. That's one thing that scares me about this Marquette team, because you look at it on paper, you're like, okay, Tyler Kolick's is great point guard. They have Cam Jones. He's a great secondary ball handler. Also, Igadaro is a guy who can be an offensive initiator. This shouldn't be a team that gets rattled. Shaka Smart's a great coach. This should be a team that's able to look at a team that's pressuring them and and smirk and be like, okay, we have something for that. We have a bunch of guys that can run offense, get to the spots, knock down shots, make plays. But there are moments this season where Marquette has gotten kind of rattled by chaos. So, uh, like you mentioned, this is a coach who – has made a has made a, a a habit of making the NCAA tournament, yep. and a guy who does that is a guy who I think does his homework. He knows his style. He also sticks to his style, and he's like, okay, I'm gonna ride with this. I'm gonna do this style. I'm gonna see how it goes. Mm-hmm. And I know for a fact that he has seen as well that Marquette is a team that can somewhat get rattled with chaos sometimes. Absolutely, that's been the narrative with Tyler Kolick in particular is that when you are able to speed him up be physical with him, he goes from being that 20-point, 10-assist guy to 12-6, and six, which is still productive, but Marquette needs him to be playing at an All-American level for this Marquette team to be Final Four caliber. I think we'll know how this game goes in the first 10 minutes because either Marquette handles his chaos and is fine, or Western Kentucky is able to rattle Marquette a little bit, and then I think we may start to see some puckering happen because th- this is something that you felt in the Purdue game last year against Fairleigh Dickinson, where you knew that Purdue had struggled against pressure, right? And that Fairleigh Dickinson was going to provide that. But Purdue was significantly more talented than Fairleigh Dickinson. Fairleigh Dickinson didn't have anybody over six foot five. It's not like not going to be a factor. And then it got tight and Purdue tightened up and everything snowballed on itself. Fairleigh Dickinson became confident and got more and more confident. You saw guys that typically were not good shooters making two, three, four threes in that game. March is funny in that way. And I think if we get to a point with the way Western Kentucky plays, if they're able to get out to an early lead or make Marquette uncomfortable and disjointed, we may see Marquette start to tighten up. And Western Kentucky feel that confidence. I don't think we're going to get the same result. We're going to get to our predictions here in a second. Um, But I do think that scenario is in place, given everything that you also talked about too, with, with the demons that Marquette is trying to exercise and get past. They're demons for a reason. And they're going to be at the forefront of their minds, particularly in their first game, first game of the tournament. Once you get that one under your belt, you kind of get comfortable. But that first game can be a major hurdle. Can be an absolutely major hurdle. Yeah, and you know I'm reaching with this one a little bit, Ralph, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, I can't help but think while we're talking about this, you know, Shaka Smart at Texas, right? They take on Abilene Christian. Abilene Christian couldn't hit a shot. I think they shot like thirty percent from the field. They shot twenty percent from three. Uh, Mark, uh, sorry, not Marquette. Texas had all these great guards at the time. They had Ramey, Matt Coleman. Yeah. All these guys who supposedly can handle pressure. And they let Joe Golding and Abilene Christian come in there and put some pressure on them, cause a little chaos. They started to tighten up. They weren't hitting shots. Andrew Jones was struggling. Like, they weren't able to hit enough shots. And then all of a sudden, you get to the end of the game, Abilene Christian's in it. The chaos is working. They Texas tightens up. That happens in the NCAA tournament. I'm just saying that the, the thing about exercising demons is they don't go away until you actually get over the hump. But the minute they start to creep in, everyone starts thinking about it and it can affect the team. Let's get to our predictions, Carter. Our predictions are brought to you by MyBookie. They're our favorite sports book here at the Sebers Media YouTube channel. You can enter a bracket contest this week for a chance to win prizes up, up to $25,000. You can also 
do straight bets, odd boosts, prop bets. They have everything up there, but the $25,000 bracket contests are the ones to enter. You can sign up now and take advantage of our generous welcome offer. You can use promo code SLEEPERS when you sign up. You get a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. Anything you want to do, my book, you can let you do it. Just remember, use promo code SLEEPERS when you sign up. So, Carter, we said all of that. I'm still taking Marquette fairly comfortably. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gonna go that I was gonna go that same way as well. I, I I think that you made a great point of that that first 10 minutes is gonna be very important. And yeah. I think that Shaka is gonna make that known to his team. And I think they're gonna jump on them right away. And like you said, Western Kentucky, they don't have the offensive firepower to catch up with this, with this, uh with this Marquette team. I think this is one where Marquette gets comfortable early, feels comfortable throughout the game. You know, I'm I'm feeling like an 80s, 85, 86 to like 69, 70 game. I think it's going to be a, a fairly easily win for Marquette and they can kind of get their tournament run, mm-hmm. uh, get it going. That's what I think, too. It is important to remember with Western Kentucky. They did win the Conference USA tournament. They also closed the regular season with four consecutive losses. And two of those were to teams that ranked outside the top 270 in Ken Palm, Middle Tennessee and FIU. They did that because of their offense uh, not being up to par and their defense did not cause turnovers in that game, in those games. So those are the key. If you're Marquette, take care of the ball. You'll be fine. I think they do. No matter what happens, we'll be back after the game to break it all down. So make sure you like and subscribe.